today, this is our, gonna be our title here. Refile. Rifle? I guess it would be spelled that way, huh? I think it is, <laughs> but it's refile. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the idea because remember this, when we're born into the world, we're born into the world not, not practicing sin. We're not saved. We're not born again. You cannot be born again coming out of your mother's womb. Because the only means of receiving salvation is confessing Jesus as the Lord of your life. Right? And a baby doesn't know how to do that. A baby doesn't even know how to speak. All it does is cry, eat, and poop. <laughs> and like Camila, she has this, she only has one, this is my grandbaby, she only has one volume when it comes to crying. It's no like building up. It's like, wah! <laughs> and it's an immediate attention. But that's not the, my point. You come into the world with innocence, right? You, we don't know what we're doing. We have no idea. Our minds. When Jesus came in, into the world, we know Jesus the Christ, the spirit that lived in the body that was given the name Jesus. <coughs> The Christ is the Messiah. The Messiah came and lived inside of the physical body. Unto us a son was given and unto us a child, which is Jesus, was born. Right? That's Isaiah. So, did he know, did his mind, let me put it that way, did his mind know all things at that time? His brain, let's put it this way, I'll put it in the brain's scenario did the brain was the brain lined up with all Jesus is no it had to come up to that place remember Jesus what grew in stature and in wisdom and in knowledge right like any other person would have grown but the the we can't take away from the fact that he is God Jesus is God and Jesus coming into that physical body, the spirit that was present still had not, the, the brain, the, the brain or the soul had not caught up to who he is. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens with us, even us coming into the world. We're, we come into the world innocent, with no knowledge, and we start to learn things, right? Jesus went, why did he go to, to temple every, every Saturday? Learn. He, re he read from the scrolls every, every Saturday, right? The Bible, there was no Old Testament. It's just the Bible, period. It's just the Torah. And he would read the, the law, the books of the law, right? Of how, how to live as to fulfill the law. His mind had to come to that place of walking in line with it. So I'm saying all of this, is be I say this because when we, when we come into the world, we come into the world not with a bunch of sin and corruptness and all this stuff going on in our heads. We don't know that. Even if it's a child that is unfortunately has been abused physically or, or emotionally, you know, mentally growing up from the baby, from a baby, they don't know what's in their mind. Full trust. There's, there's only love, there's only a, a demand, and that's why we, I, I remember the story of, uh, I don't know if you guys know who Jan Crouch is, she's with the Lord now, but she used to have this um, missionary outreach to China, I think it was, huh? Romania. Romania, Ukraine, yes, and there were these babies that were in the, held in, a, in, in an orphanage, and they all were, and these were like, like children that were now grown. And they were all like in a, um, <clears throat> a curled up position <clears throat> because they had never been touched. Never been touched. Do you think it's important to have the hands that God has blessed us with to be used to bless our children? There's something about holding the child the bonding that comes immediately when a, in a, when a child is born, the baby's born, what happens? They give her, give her to the mother, to that immediate <coughs> connection, right? So there, there's, there's only this love that's present. 
that purity is what is being what we're drawn to. All of us love things that are pure. How many of you like to be lied to? Nobody does, because it's not pure, right? So him, you know, us coming into the world, we had a filing, a natural, and I'm using that as an illustration, guys. Okay, so this is our brain, our minds, and we had that three trillion years of files that we can put in over the lifespan of a person, one individual, that you can file in your brain, in your mind. But what happens? You come, you start to grow, and we start to learn how to hate. We learn resentment. We learn unforgiveness. We learn how to despise people. We learn these things. Resent them. Unforgiveness. All these negative things. We learn them. <clears throat> it's a learned thing. Why? Because it's not natural for us. People would assume, because have, have you heard this expression, I'm only human? And I'm, it's only natural for me to act like a human or a sinner because we're all born sinners. So it would be natural for us to sin. No, it's not natural. I get where, this, where people are coming from when they say, yeah, you're going to naturally go that direction because that's the way the world, the flow of the world, all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life, that's all, that's the flow. So that's already going. And remember, now we're going to get into this a little bit further. I think I'm going ahead of myself a little here. So let's, let's, let me go to my notes here. Okay, refile. Refile requires renewing. Once, once, you, once you come to this place in your, in your life that you know I'm recommitting my life to God, I got it renewed. The demand for renewal came because of Adam's decision to disobey. We have to contend with that. In Genesis 6, 5, it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was, it was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, mind, was only evil, how often? Continually. Only evil continually. We do what we convince our minds with. We don't do what, what we think. We don't do what we know. We do what we believe. How many of you know of people who smoke cigarettes? Mm -hmm. You know people who smoke cigarettes? Yeah. Does the cigarette pack have a warning on the side of it? Mm -hmm. And what does it say? Cancer. If you smoke this, it can cause cancer and cause you, you can die from it, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that knowledge? And it goes into your head, and you read it, those who smoke, and you read it, you, you have to make a decision mm -hmm. to keep on smoking in spite of what the warning says. And I like using the illustration of <laughs> taking lemonade, that, you know, the, the cheap lemonade that you get in a gallon bottle, not the real stuff, the sugar, corn syrup, but it looks like lemonade, and then you got chlorine. You ever seen chlorine, liquid chlorine? <clears throat> and they don't, they look the same? But what stops you from drinking the, the liquid chlorine? What it says. Yeah, the smell. And then also what it says. It has a little X, you know, a, a skull with the X on it. It says, if you drink this, what could happen to you? Yeah, you could die. Right? So a lot of people do things based off of what they read. But not everything they read do they believe. How many of you believe 100% what the Bible says to you? There's nothing in it that you don't believe. Huh? <laughs> 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 we can go through a whole bunch of different um, scenarios regarding what we do believe and what we don't believe from the Bible. <coughs> This is why it's so crucial for us to renew our minds to this, okay? So, so that's why I wrote this down. What do, what, what do we do what we convince our minds with? Remember, Abraham was fully what? Persuaded. Fully persuaded. 
there was an influence that came because if if God told you to take the lambs and the and the cows and everything and you ever seen animals right full animals and take the animals and take a knife and from the skull down slice kill them and slice their bodies in half lay them down side by side get the other animals and make this path of all these body layers all the way down and now of a fire comes and passes through them. And this is what they would call it because the vet, it's, it's split in half. It's called the Valley of Blood. It's called the Way. That's where we get the idea of the Way. I am the Way. That's talking about it was a symbol of who Jesus is. That there's only one way for you to come to God. It's through this Valley of Blood. Only one way. He had to pass through this. This is, this is what, how covenants were practiced, right? So, we had, so God took that concept and brought it in. He made it real to Abraham to, sit, to the point that he was fully persuaded. Because you really think about taking the life of an animal. You know, we, we go and enjoy, you know, In-N-Out and Burger King and all these other burger places, right? Habits, whatever. Right? We go and have our burgers. <clears throat> but we're not there while they're you know, taking the life of that animal and grinding down the meat to make it where you can have a, a, a good hamburger or a steak, ribeye, tomahawk, whatever. You know, th those came from live animals. We, we don't, you ever, you do that? Nobody here, right? You go to, to the meat market or the market at Costco and get your stuff. It's already been sliced up. But we don't hit, get this concept because now think about Abraham. He's there and he's seeing all this. And he's, God told him, take these animals, split them in half. Take, the only thing he didn't split in half was the birds. Take the heads off and, and drain the blood out. So that was like all these. This was a very sobering thing. Mm -hmm. Made him think because he was questioning God. How am I going to have an heir? My wife is almost 100 years of age. How is she going to give birth to a child? Your mind has to be convinced. Notice that the imagination was continuous. Remember, the, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a spin off of this because there is a law to this because it has to do with how you meditate on things, how you use your imagination on things. Yeah. One of the greatest gifts God has given us is your mind. The Holy Spirit is present to lead you and guide you, but He does not do things for you. <laughs> He makes you responsible for your own actions. And we're going to see that in a moment. But imagination continuously. Continuously thinking about something. Imagining. Picturing. Right? We begin pure and become defiled. Well, we initially started off with the file of love and joy and peace and long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance, faith in God, righteousness, right standing. All these good attributes became minimized as we continued in this flow of the world. Titus 1.15 says, To the pure, all things are pure. But to the defiled and unbelieving. Because you see the, the word there, defiled, defiled, mm -hmm. is something that has been taken out, that was stifled, no longer functional. Because you think about when Adam disobeyed, God said, in the day you eat of that tree, what would happen to him? You shall surely die. Did he? He lived after that point. How, how many years? 930 years. Right? But God said in the day that you eat of that tree, you, shall, you will surely die. He died spiritually. But here's the idea. Or here's the actual fact. The truth. Is that when you are out of relationship with God. And I'm talking about not being born again. You now are separated from life. And that's what happened with Adam. So I, I like the illustration of being on the phone call 
if you're on a cell phone or whatever phone you are and you're having a communication with whosoever and then the the call drops you're cut off mm -hmm. does that mean they died no. no it means they were what mm -hmm. cut off yeah. Adam was cut off from what from life mm -hmm. from God mm -hmm. that's the reason for wh why we need Jesus and so thank God we all in here do know Jesus. And I trust that you listening know the Lord. If you don't, you need to become born again. It's not about coming to church or changing denomination or religion. It's about you establishing a relationship with you and God through his son, Jesus Christ. And it's a simple thing to say, Jesus, be my Lord. I believe with all my heart, God raised Jesus from the dead. If you say that, you're saved. That's it. Period. God takes the work out because we couldn't earn it. We couldn't earn the position of right standing with God at all. So he says, to the pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But both their minds and their what? Conscience, consciences are defiled. Conscience has to do with your belief system. Remember what you believe. And so mind you, you, you are taught different things throughout your years of life through authoritative figures, through traumatic experiences, and through the words you hear on a consistent basis. They have an impact on you. How many of you ever picked up something hot? Pan, iron, whatever. Are you aware that you shouldn't do that again? Did you remember that? Have you ever been hit by a truck or a car? Are you aware that you need to watch when you walk out into the street? <laughs> it doesn't even have to be a car. It can be a bicycle. It can be anything. But you're aware if when something that's bigger or faster than you is coming along to pay attention. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. That's an experience. And I've been ran over twice. I got run over as a kid and I got hit by a truck later on in years. I got beat up before. I got beat up, but I got jumped. Got bats beat with bats. Bat, beat, batted down, I guess you want to call that. I remember that. Yeah, I just, I, yeah. I, I didn't like it. It hurt. Actually, I was loaded, so I hurt the day after. <laughs> but that's not the point, is that you remember these things. I, I, I remember. This is when I was a kid, 13 years old. <laughs> and I'm 61 now. I remember that like it happened yesterday. There's things that you experience in life, hurts and wounds that you go through. Do you have some memories in your life, in your mind, that you can fall back on yeah. and take you to that place? And many times people go to that sympathetic place, feeling sorry for themselves, and they get into that mode, and they start to wallow up in it. There is a, an emotion that comes along with this, a feeling. And people like that feeling, negative, negative affirmation. We need to build ourselves up on what God says to us. We need to defile the defiling. You hear what I'm saying? There were some, there were some files that were injected into our minds that we need to get out. And here's the thing, <clears throat> who's responsible for changing that process, that mental thinking process? We are. Is it God? No. Does God change it? Because think about it, if God changes it, why, why do you still think the same way right now? Not you, but you know, people, yeah. right? If God changes it, you want to be in a better shape physically, you know, you want to be a better weight and all that, hey, just, just tell God. He'll do it. I mean, nothing's impossible with God. That's right. yeah. Why does not he do it? Because he has given you authority here in this earth realm to utilize his word and to do the things that you should be doing using authority. If we were under the Old Testament, we need God. We need God. Now through Jesus, word, he who abides in me, <laughs> Abides in who? Him. In Him. 
we're one with God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Most believers are in the position that God is doing all things. So let me ask you this. The, the Father, where does He sit at? On the throne. throne. Where's Jesus at? Right right. At His right hand. Right? They're not down here on earth. Who's down here? Holy the Holy Spirit is. And who else? Us. His body. Jesus' body. Us. Yeah. Right? right? Does the Holy Spirit do all things for us? No. What is He called in the Bible? He's called what? Helper. I can't hear you. Helper. He's called a what? Helper. Helper. That means he's not, if I ask you to come and help me move this podium, you grab one side and I grab the other, you're helping me. But if I ask you to come and help me move the podium and you stand there and I am waiting for you to help, nothing's going to happen. We're going to stay right there. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, as long as I choose, yes. <laughs> as long as that person... Does, stands there and chooses not to help me. Yes, I'm going to get too deep into this. Okay, <laughs> But you understand? The Holy Spirit is our what? Helper, not our doer. Who's the doer? What does James say to us? Be what? I can't hear you. I, I can't hear you guys. Doers. Oh, there, thank you very much. Okay, be what? Doers of what? The word. Who's the doer? God is the doer? We are. You are. And he's, now here, mind you, all things come from God. But he gave us his word and the authority to use it so that things get done. Amen. 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 Refiling, re, re, rifling, no, refiling begins from the inside out. So that we got, what do you got to start? We got to start there, right? John 3, 3 says, Jesus answered, said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born, what? Born what? Again. I can't hear you. Again. Again. That means they were already born once. Mm -hmm. If they were born again, they were already born once. Like every human in the world. You're born into the world. But they must be now born another time. But what kind of birth are we talking about? A spiritual birth. All right? He, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Is that what it says? What does it say up there? Y'all see what it says? He cannot see what? Where is the kingdom of God? Is it in heaven? Where is it at? It's within us. Or oh, I should say, within us. I'm going to stop doing this because then it gives you the implication that th I'm just a little guy in here. <laughs> within us. The kingdom of God is within us. Amen. Right? All right. Once we are born again, our minds must be renewed to God's original intent for mankind. God always wanted man to enjoy life to the full in relationship to him, loving him. God, that's what God's intent was. God wanted to be, continue to be a father, us be sons and daughters, and continue to produce from the beginning. You're talking about wealth. How much did Adam own? Who was the wealthiest man that lived other than God? That was Adam. Who owned it? Adam. Who else? <laughs> there was nobody else right so but we're not talking about it from that position because we, we, they weren't even thinking about wealth they were thinking about multiply replenish productivity that's what that's what God is about if if there's a residual financial blessing that comes from multiplying and replenishing so be it but that's not the goal the goal is vision, provision, provision because of vision. And that's what allows for increase. That's what God desires. So that's God's original intent. So uh, Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? You, you see the word renew? Renewing. So that's our prefix in there, right? Re has to do with what? Again. Again. 
Do it again. Do something new again. And again. And again. Do something new again and again and again and again. And that's why faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Without, without hearing, your faith will be minimized. We all have, and you're going to have a continuous imagination of something. So what is your priority? And your priority is going to be based on what you value, what you give value to something. Okay, so come into church. Okay, so this is a, such a simple practice, but it's something that develops you, develops us individually, and it, de and it also enhances who you are as a person because now you increase who you are and now wherever you go now from here you go with this added information of who you are as a person it allows for God to shine through you so there's benefit to coming to church it's not the end all it's not the only thing but there is a benefit to coming to church so we got to get our minds renewed be not conformed to this world be but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove or know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You're not going to know God's will, obviously. Because when you go to your Bible, when you, how many of you got a Bible in your hand? You got a Bible in hand? Or you got it on your phone, right? Okay, so look at your Bible. And look at, look at your Bible on your phone. And say, this is God's will. This is God's will. So if you want to know God's will... Like right here, he says that, that you may know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Then what do you have to do? You got to read it. You got to read it. You got to study it before you even do what it says. Because you, you're not going to do it if you don't believe it. You got to read it with the intent of doing something with it, right? Okay, so renew. It means renovation Complete change for the better. So I, I can identify that with this when you, we, we talk about a remodel. Some of us need to remodel our, our physical bodies. Some of us need to remodel our minds. But I'm going to use this in the house. So when you want to remodel, you want to remodel the bathroom or a kitchen or a bedroom, whatever it may be. It's so that you can make it, not so just so it can look good, but so that it can operate more efficiently than what it was. Yeah. That's the intent of it. Mm -hmm. It's not just about looking good and having this added investment where it's going to increase your value, which is fine. That will come with it. But the, the actual intent is so that you can operate more efficiently and more effectively. You with me? So, complete change for the better. Okay? In Titus 3, 5, it says, not by works of... You have to read the context of it because I extracted this and copied and pasted. But read the context of it on, on your own time. Okay? But not by works of righteousness, meaning that where you stand with God. Okay? Which, which we have done. But according to His mercy, He what? He saved us. And the... And uh, I'm sorry, through the washing of what? Rebirth. Say it again. Rebirth. So that means a born uh, again. A rebirth. Isn't that right? And the renewal of the Holy Spirit. And here's, the, here's, the, here's that ingredient that we many times are missing because of the tradition of the church regarding the Holy Spirit. And how he is minimally spoken of. The church, not all churches, there's not, there has not been a strong emphasis of the Holy Spirit. When in fact he is the main ingredient with regards. He himself, we need the Holy Spirit. He is actually the one that comes in and does a transformation spiritually. Making us right standing. And then Jesus presents him to us the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit cannot live in an unholy place so we have to become born again spirit needs to be made new once we become born again now Jesus presents the Holy Spirit presents Jesus we become born again and now Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit to us and he will lead us and guide us into all truth
The lack of clarity, the lack of understanding, comes because of the lack of prayer. Now, you know, how much should you pray? There is no time slot for it. You don't have no time measurement to determine how much, how well you can. You pray five hours and I pray 15 minutes. But you could be praying haphazardly, going, going off, and I pray efficiently, and I receive more out of my 15-minute prayer than you do in your five hours of prayer. Y- you all with me? People, people have, we need to have the knowledge of God, and, and we got to have the knowledge with the balance, because we have to have the Holy Spirit's help to understand the Bible, to understand what, he, what God says to us. Because you're going to have to do, then you're going to have to do some natural study of the cultural, cultural impacts of the day yeah. back at that time. Who were, who were being spoken to? Mm-hmm. When you think of the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews is a very deep book. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. But who is it written to? Who is it written to? The Hebrews. Hebrews. So who were Hebrews? The Judaizers, the Jew, those who practiced Judaism. Right? So yeah, they, they were actually doing it. And they wanted to go back to sacrificial ceremonial practices. <laughs> Not accepting the blood of Jesus being the final part of this covenant practice. But you, if you don't understand culturally who who is written to it's going to be difficult to understand the bible so you got to do some natural study i mean you know you got google man just go on google search <laughs> you're going to find somebody on there who you can't just take it you know, you can't just just take it you're going to do your own personal study i got books today that are no longer in print they don't no longer print them actually they were getting rid of them I went to uh, Fuller Seminary and their bookstore and the books that they were getting rid of, I bought them at a discounted price. A whole encyclopedia of of both the uh, Protestant and Catholic uh, influence. Because there were were different influences culturally from from, uh, uh, the uh, biblical studies. So you got to have, you know, you, you, if you want to really get into that, that, that much to that extent. But to understand the Bible, yeah, you're going to need to do some study on it. Now, that's why coming to church is going to give you a little bit of insight that will help you. Because I, in comparison to a lot of other people, I don't know what, what I need to know. I need to learn more. And I'm your pastor. <laughs> So if I need to learn, you guys need to learn more, right? Okay, so here, and then, and then when I go, when I read my Bible, I read it. I read what it says. It's read what it says. I'm trying to make it say something else, okay? He says, through washing of rebirth, you think of the term washing, just like if you just read it, washing what? Washing what? Washing your spiritual condition and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. So is the Holy Spirit important to us? Yes. Yes, he is. Titus 3, 5 from the uh, King James translation reads this way. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, meaning receive salvation, not through works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration, regenerating life within you, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So what makes faith work? And this is where we had somewhat touched on this and this is why I am giving you this bit of a foundation to it faith works through love and we learned this right remember that you guys how does faith work through love love. and we read this in Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 for for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision so who's circumcision (laughs) Jews 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 those who are Hebrew from from Abraham right any, you know what circumcision is? Do you know what circumcision is? Yes. The cutting off of the foreskin of any male, right? That was a sign of your willingness to be under this authority of this covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, right? 
And then there are the uncircumcision, those that have not had that have done. So that's in the physical. But here Paul says, for in, in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What matters? Faith, which works through love. That's what matters. So let me ask you this. Do, is what you believe where your faith is? Is what you believe where your faith is? Yes. Yeah, because you will not do anything you do not believe. That's why it's crucial to have the proper understanding. Are you with me? So we, for, for, it says, which, uh, but faith which works through love. King James uses the word by instead of through. Because we read modern English version, right? And so this is what the word by. This is a really good word, I mean, definition-wise. This is a good definition. So if you guys want to jot it down, if not, take a picture of it. Or want us to do it later on. Or you just don't care, that's fine. Okay, by means the ground or reason something is done or not done. You, you get that? The word by means the ground or reason something is done or not done. So when we read this, but faith which works through or by love. Love is the reason why faith works. Love is the reason why faith works. It's our relationship with God that gives us the confidence to trust what He says to us. Remember, he loved us first, right? God loved us. God loves you in spite of. God loves you if you don't love him. God loves you, period. God loves us. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, 36 says, Therefore do not throw away your confidence, which will be greatly rewarded. For you need what? I can't hear you. Patience. That has to do with strength. So we're going to talk a little bit about that so that after you have done the will of God you will receive the promise but you have to do something you individually responsibly now here here's here let me just put a dis, disclaimer here a, a clause here because you do not do the will of God does not change your relationship with God it doesn't it doesn't change your position with God you are who you are in Jesus, in spite of whether you act like Jesus or not. So if you act like the devil, you're still in Jesus. I'm talking about people who have confessed Jesus as the Lord of their life. Now, so here's the reasoning behind that. If you go to the work mentality of being right standing with God, now we don't need Jesus. Because I just need to keep praying and reading the word and going to church, giving my tithes, giving my offerings, doing good to people, being a good person. I keep doing that. That makes me right with God. Is that true? No, no it does not. So there's a lot of good people that are going to hell. Unfortunately. It's not what you do. Remember this. We were born sinners even though we had not sinned. We needed salvation. We needed Jesus. Jesus came and saved us from that position of being a sinner. Right? Adam sinned. Everybody born from him. We need to become born again. Okay? So you're not a sinner because you sin. You, you, we were sinners. We were sinners because we were born one. But now we are born again in Jesus. So you're no longer the sinner. Now you are the righteousness of God. You're right standing with God. We are right standing with God. Amen? So when we have here, he says, uh, don't throw away your confidence. That means what you say about who you are. You do the will of God, 
you're going to receive the promise. The promises are there. The promises are there for you, but they do require faith for them to be manifested. Okay? Any seed requires time to grow. So you're going to, you're going to have to be patient with this. Patience is a strength of character. Patience, like, you know, where James talks about... Oh, well, well, I'm not going to go there. Okay, patience is a strength of character. Okay? Patience is steadfast, constant, enduring, persevering, and sustaining. Patience is the characteristics of a person who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose in life. A patient person is loyal to their convictions, even in the face of the greatest trials and sufferings. A patient person never loses sight of their commitments. A patient person does not easily bend under trying times. A patient person has control of their emotions and the self-restraint which does not hastily retaliate a wrong. A patient person is strong and courageous and does not coward out of personal conflicts through wrath and revenge. Luke 21.19 says, Jesus said this so wisely, In your patience... Possess ye your souls. And when you think about the soul, you think, you're, you know, what he's referring to is your emotions, your feelings. In patience, you control the way you feel. Do you have patience? Yes. Oh, yeah. All of us do. Amplify says it this way. By your steadfastness and patient endurance, you shall win the true life of your souls who you are. Luke 8, 11 says, Now the meaning of the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. And I'm, I went here because uh, within this, uh, you know, I'm going to ask for you guys to do your own reading because we're running out of time here. Read Luke chapter 8 regarding the parable of the sower. That's your homework assignment. Okay? I'm going to... I'm. Huh? Uh, chapter 8, verses 11 through, I'll tell you right now. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. Okay. Uh, okay. Those along, verse number 12. Those along the, the traveled road are the people who have heard. Then the devil comes and carries away the message out of their hearts that they may not believe, acknowledge me as their Savior, and devout themselves to me and be saved here and hereafter. Verse 13, and those upon the rock are the people who, when they hear the word, receive the and welcome it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time a trial and temptation fall away, withdraw, and stand aloof. Verse 14, and as for what and as for what fell among the thorns, these are the people who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked and suffocated with the anxieties and cares and riches and pleasures of life. And their fruit does not ripen, come to maturity and perfection. Verse 15. But as for that seed in the good soil, there are the people who, hearing the word, hold it fast in a just noble, virtuous, and worthy heart, and steadily bring forth fruit with patience. That's the reason why I wanted to read this. What do they bring forth fruit? I mean, how? Patience. Because of patience. Perseverance. And now with all that definition they gave you regarding patience, having your commitments, being loyal, being honest, what we read from Psalms 24, Having clean hands, having a pure heart, being a person of your word, being selfless, being a person of integrity and honesty. This par parable gives us the description to our strength. And what is our strength? Patience. And patience and faith work hand in hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. You guys receive today? Yes. All right. Thank you, Lord. That means you're going to go out and preach the gospel to every person that you come across. Right? Amen. <laughs> well, thank you guys for taking the time to 
be with, be with us today. Uh, I trust this has been beneficial to you. And uh, as you hear this message, hear it over and over again, uh, you will be built up. Uh, if you want to give to our ministry, you can give through Venmo. You're giving to Faith Wired. We want to thank you for your uh, support and for your prayerful support and your financial support. We appreciate you. We love you. And may God's blessing continue to flow in your life. We'll see you next time.